Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to use MySQL to import CSV data. So this is our uh, salespeople CSV file. We have all these people, first name, last name, email, city, and um, which one is city, which one is state. Uh, this is city, and I think this one is state. And I have also provided you with this file. Uh, salespeople, it is a Microsoft Excel comma separated values file, CSV file. Now, a little bit about this file. I've also uh, copied this file to the C drive here. This is salespeople, the same file. This is for Windows users. On Mac, I believe that uh, in the file path, so if you go to properties and if you grab the file path, you're not going to see any like um, spaces. But for Windows, uh, if your username has two words and if there is a space between them, if you try to run it, you're going to get an error. So the reason that I've provided it within the C drive is, so if I take a look at, uh, at the path or location it is just c colon and back backslash and then the name of the file so there is not going to be any error that that is just a heads up if there is any error sent, syntax error then just provide it in the c drive and provide the path for it and just just start working with it we are going to work with both versions we are going to work with the version which is within this file so for which this is the path you can see the path and the for and with which uh it, with the file which is in the c drive <laughs> so this is the csv i'm just going to close it and let's go into here so this is our python file first off we are going to create a database so i'm just going to run this I want you to be really comfortable working with command line uh, when creating database. That's why we could create them like using uh, the workbench itself, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work, uh, create a database using the command line. So database, I'm going to call it sales. This has been created and then we are going to pop into here. So we are going to use the MySQL connector which I assume you have already installed. And I'm just gonna make sure that, let's just clear this. I'm just gonna make sure that this um, virtual environment is activated. Okay, so it is already activated, just make sure. So what we are going to do here is I'm gonna say import uh, mysql.connector as and we are just going to alias it as mysql mysql and then we are going to import uh, import the csv module as well which we have talked about now first off we are going to connect to our um, uh, mysql we are going to connect to our database mysql database so we are going to say mysql dot connect and uh, we are going to pass in some data so we have our users i'm going to say just go there let me grab that and let's put it there so what is the user the user is going to be root uh, what is the password we need to connect so that's why we need to provide everything okay this is the password uh, what is the host the host is local host and uh, finally what is the database Database is the newly created database, sales, perfect. We are going to add another configuration as well later on, but that's towards the end of this lecture. This is going to return for us a connection object and we are going to store it within this connection variable. We are going to create our cursor uh, object as well. And I'm going to say cursor is going to be equal to connection.cursor. Perfect. Now we're going to use this cursor object to create tables and those tables are going to hold data for us. Now let's create our query so it is going to work with. This is the query that is actually going to create the tables for us. Now I'm going to pass and pass them within a multi line uh, within a doc string. So, so multi line is uh, available for us. So I'm going to say create table sales 
people and then let's just open this up and let's just provide it here i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this back there and there we go now it's perfect so first off it, we are going to have the first column is going to be id which is type int and i'm going to pass in 255 as the limit and i'm going to say it should be required which is not null and auto increment in increment uh, perfect so this is the first column the second column is first name so we have first name last name email address city and state so we need to take all of those into consideration so first name it is going to be var char 255 and not null or required just press in a comma so i'm just going to copy it a few times the second one is going to be last name 255 var char not null then we are going to have uh, our the next one was email address so email address then we had city and then we have a uh, state St oops state so state is going to be again these are all going to be the same thing and if, uh, in eventually we are going to say primary key let's let's add that constraint we are going to say it is going to be id perfect let's save that so this is our query let me just take a look at it so there are no errors var char not null okay um everything looks fine now we are going to create our table but first we need to make sure that that table uh, doesn't already exist so execute cursor.execute we are going to say drop table if all uh, if exists if exists which one is that table that is people sales people so we created it and we drop it if it already exists so we are not going to have two tables by the name of sales people perfect and let's execute this query as well i'm not going to comment it out these are very simple stuff and i'm going to say execute which, which one is our query so let's just create query i'm just going to add it as query i think that is understandable enough perfect so these two are the same thing now let's import our csv data we should be seeing our results very soon so i'm going to say with let's use the open method and where is it now for the for importing them i'm going to use the one which is in the in this path in this long path next to the other files so they're in the like local directory i'm going to say it is uh sales people dot csv and we are going to be it's we are going to add the mode which is read only let's save it as file we can we are going to create a variable csv data uh, let's read from it so csv dot reader because we want to read from it and let's pass in the file now for let's iterate over it as well for row and uh, csv data what do we want to do for for each row so each row is going to be a list but we need to convert it to a tuple that can be inserted uh, uh, using mysql connector into our database now how do we know it's a tuple uh, it's a list but it's not a tuple uh, the way that we can know this is i'm just going to print it out as well row is a rows are i'm just going to say row is a list uh, let's grab the row here and then we are going to apply our operations so we are going to say row not to row tuple come on row tuple let's grab our row and provide it within our tuple so it becomes a list it becomes a tuple then we are going to execute cursor dot execute execute what do we want to execute we want to grab all the all the records uh, from uh, the cells and insert them into our uh, from the sales people CSV into the sales people table of our sales database I hope you're not getting confused uh, I'm gonna say insert into uh, sales people 
Okay, so we are going to pass in first name. Remember, the ID is auto increment, so last name, email address, city, and state. Perfect. What are going to be the values? The values are going to be, I'm just going to provide them here. So the values are, now these values, they're going to be placeholders. So I'm just going to say, uh, percentage sign S, just comma, let's just copy that. Just copy it, provide it there, there, that's two. So we need five of these. So this that's three. This is four and a, eventually that is five. Now let's pass in our tuple as well. So we have row underscore Hmm. Um, row underscore tuple. There we go. So let's save all the changes. Now, this execution, this execution within the open statement, this one, this is going to insert one row at a time because we need to carry up the tuple conversion to be able to insert data into, da into the database. The columns um, we have written here, uh, it has to match that CSV order that we have. So in the CSV order, we had first name, last name, email address, city, and state. So these columns, they have to match that order for this to work. Now, what we're going to do here is let's save and commit the changes. So I'm going to say connection.commit. Uh, we can also get our data from there. So I'm going to say cursor.execute. Let's grab the data. Select all columns from sales people table and we are going to limit the uh, the result to 10 that's something you didn't know about SQL let's print them all so we are going to say cursor dot fetch oh perfect and finally we are going to say connection uh, dot close perfect so let's save that. Hopefully there are no errors in here. If there were, we are, we are going to fix them. So let's save that. Let's run this file. Let me just grab the file name. That makes it easier for us to write it here. Uh, dot pi. Save that. There we go. So there are no errors. And you can see that it says a row is a list. <laughs> here we go. So you can see there were lists, but then we convert them to two, converted them to tuples. So we have one. This is number two. First name, last name, email address, city, and state. Then we have three. So here we have five. Here we have number ten. Perfect. So we were able to do this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is we are going to uh, grab, uh, we are going to load data in file as well. So the way that we can do that is that data that we had inside our C drive, you might ask, you might ask, okay, why do we need to do that? Now, for me to show you why is that the problem with this with statement that we used here. Now, all of our data within our CSV file, they happen to be of type string. Now, this method, this is, uh, I should have actually called it, this is going to be method one, uh, inserting data from uh, inserting data into DB from CSV. This is method one. The reason that there is a problem with this method is that all the everything that we have inserted into our database is of type string. Now that's okay for this example but what if you have but what happens if you have numbers there are going to be strings as well and then that is going to create a lot of problems for us so you can see all of them are strings that's cool for now but let's come here and let's actually take a look at our database so here is our sales database this is sales salespeople table and if you look at them you can see they're surrounded by quotes so everything aside from the id which is auto increment of course so let's say you had phone numbers they would be strings as well that is not an ideal way of importing data from a csv file into your mysql database there is another way as well and that way is going to be our method number two so i'm just going to comment that one out so let's i'm going to keep the connection.commit we are going to keep all of that 
and I'm gonna say method uh, method two and this is using a specific SQL command to insert data now at first this might seem a little a little bit weird but I'm going to explain every part of it so we are going to create a query and I'm going to try to explain all parts of this query so we are going to I'm just gonna set it as Q and let's use this so I'm gonna say load data uh, local local so for this to work you know what I'm going to do here is I could just go ahead and uh, I think this comment this is going to drop table uh, if it if exists salespeople this is going to remove it so we don't have to do it manually so let me just go on and continue so it says load data local in file just make sure I spell it correctly and in file now we are going to pass in the uh, address for that data where is the address so we know that the address is that's why I put it in the C drive so this is going to be the address sales within the C drive the first uh, there's going to be a file sales people people dot CSV don't forget the extension then where do we want to put it we want to say into let me just provide uh, triple quotes so we are we where do we want to put it we want to say put it into table what is the table name sales people sales people let's just pronounce uh, type it correctly and uh, we we say that the fields are terminated 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 by a comma so each field uh, within the CSV file uh, are uh, each value is going to be separated by a comma that's what this means fields terminated by comma and then let's move. this is actually one string I'm spreading it out on multiple lines because it's a little bit um, difficult to digest so I just want you guys to take it one step at a time and we say that it is enclosed enclosed by uh, let's pass an, an, a quote there now the uh, because each value is a string we pull out a string from the CSV and map it to whatever the data types is in the database that's why we pass in a string there and eventually we need to pass in the columns that we have used so we have first name we have last name email address city and state so let's grab those let's pass them here then we are going to uh, execute this query so we are going to say there is a possibility that there might be an error and I'm going to tell you how you can fix that it's not like a typo or like a mistake mistake that you have done no no it's gonna be something that the application will not allow you to do it after we are done with this uh, it tells you we, need, we are going to add another configuration so uh, for uh, for the other configuration we are basically going to allow local in file so allow local in file and we are going to set it to true perfect so let's save that let's come here and we executed the query and uh, let's save this let's try to run it if there is any error I'm going to tell you if I didn't face the error doesn't mean that you're not going to face it you, you there is a high possibility that you're going to face that error. I'm going to tell you how you can fix it so we are going to say clear uh, let's grab this file let's run it and it says I check the manual can respond to syntax you have an error in your SQL syntax salespeople CSV into table uh, fields term at line one so let's take a look at that fields terminated by this hmm fields terminated by that so we had our salespeople fields terminated by that enclosed I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all on one line just separate them by a space it's very very strict so let's do that let's grab this one 
Well, I could have used just a simple quote. So I'm going to use that there. So within we have, uh, just make sure that when you have double quotes on the outside, on the inside, you just have single quotes. Let's save that. Let's clear this. Let's run this again. Uh, it says, oh, we are not, we are not actually executing. So you need to terminate this with semicolon as well. Okay. Uh, did I just do it? Yes, I did load data local file load data local in file in oh this is misspelled. See? These syntax errors, they're they're really, really, really okay. It's, we are gonna move on. So load data in file sales close by first name, last name. I have inserted the where is that semicolon that I inserted there? So let's save that. Why is it going there? It's trying, so I'm just gonna use triple quotes, uh, triple double quotes. Maybe that is going to fix the issue. There we go, perfect. Okay, hopefully there, there we go. So we, I, I have not faced that error, and you can see that I've basically grabbed uh, 10 of my results. Are there, are they 10? Yeah, we did limit them by 10, perfect. And we should not have duplicates in here, so I'm just gonna refresh. I'm going to go to table. Hopefully there are no duplicates. And now you can see that there is no quote surrounding these names. So it means that we trace them to their, we map them to, to their data type and then we insert them like that. Now, uh, you might, you might, there's a high chance that you're going to get an error that is going to tell you, um, I'm just going to copy this, this uh, error. And I'm going to put it down here for you. So you do not waste your time looking online for it. So you might have this error. So I'm going to say you might get this error. That says load data local in file request re rejected due to restriction on, restrictions on access. So if you get this error, so if you get this error, then uh, what you're going to do is, I'm just going to put it inside doc strings. It's not a perfect way of doing it, but you need to follow the steps. Step one, open command uh, command line on uh, in my SQL in my SQL. Perfect. Then on step two, type the following line. So I'm just going to say when you open it, just look uh, type in this command this is going to show all global variables like local and file and i'm going to show you how you can do that so you just open it up enter your password type that for me it says local and file on because i did turn it on for you it, the reason that you're getting that error is it is going to say off so you need to turn it on so the, the way that i'm going the way that you are going to be able to turn it on is step three just type just type set uh, global local and file to true so let's save that let me come in here just uh, just set it i'm going to set it to false so i can show you how you can set it to true as well so if i local and file you, you most likely you're going to see it off now if i try to run this code again uh, there we go. Load data local and file cannot uh, re um, request rejected due to restrictions on access. So if you see this error, first off, you're going to check the status. Make sure that is the error that you're getting. So you're going to go there. You're going to paste that there. And the status is going to show to you that it is off. After the status is off, you need to set it to true by grabbing this file so you're just going to say set global local and file to true and then if you take a look at the status again it says on and if you run this file and let's just click here let's run it again there we go perfect error is gone so let me clear this again i'm just going to run it again so you can really see and if you come in here rerun this there we go there are no duplicates there will never be duplicates so with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.